more Ni toka maju Ni na penda god Na ni na penda kenya And because of that The CEO of Safaricom, Bob Collymore, is no more. But his spirit, courage, and zeal for life lingers in the hearts of the many lives he touched. We've been speaking to people who've encountered Bob, worked with him, and knew him well to paint this picture of Bob the man. Bob was Bob. What you see on the dance floor is what they saw in the boardroom. A man driven by a deep desire for equality, diversity, inclusion, and of course, fun. You know, I love it. Bob was young at heart, right? And he was fun. He was quite cheeky, right? He, he, he loved a good laugh. Um, and that made him very relatable. And I think it's really important because we, um, we're not the same world we were before in Africa. We have a very young population. And so to be a leader, it's good to relate to people. Don't be too formal. Get people to walk with you. Even sometimes get them to walk ahead of you. Because leading is not necessarily about always being in control. Leading is about inspiring others to stand up and do something. And I think that's what Bob did. <laughs> Bob loved music, you know, and I think that was, you know, everybody has, has their thing. And I think for Bob, music was definitely, you know, one of the things that he loved. Um, his, his son is also very musical and um, attended, you know, great musical school. And Bob was very, very keen on the arts. So I think he will always be remembered by Kenyans for the support that he's given to the, to the world of, of arts and the creative space. I think he had an incredible sense of humor. There was never a moment that we had an interaction where he didn't have something to comment on and to have a funny joke about. And one of the things we kept talking about he kept asking me, how come your, your forehead doesn't shine? Because we're both bald. And he was like, your, hair, your forehead doesn't shine. I'm, I'm just like, it was just good genes. And you don't have the genes as good as me. So we had this running gag about not having hair. And I remember he told me that he shaves his own head because it's just cheaper. He's trying to save money. I'm like, seriously, you see your safaricom. You have enough money to pay for a barber. But yes, he always shaved his own head. And I have not learned how to do that. So maybe in honor of Bob, I'll try and shave my hair. Bob was a highly intelligent, highly empathetic person. Um, he really felt a lot of things um, in terms of if he saw a need, he stood up and wanted to do something about it, which is a remarkable thing. As private sector leaders, we've seen very many who do what they do very well, but don't necessarily get into the, the fray and the thick of things, who do CSR or CSI. Um, but Bob kind of believed Business is not just about doing good business, it's about doing good, and that's who he was. I was interviewing Michael Joseph in 2010, and Bob came along with him, and I was introduced how this is going to be the next CEO of Safaricom, and from that moment until his death, I don't have a text message that he never responded to. And it's phenomenal that a CEO of a company as influential, as important as Safaricom, has time for pesky journalists. Oftentimes I was just like, please give me an interview, please give me another interview. You guys have put out this statement, I need a bit more. And he was always, every single time, responding to them and saying, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I'm available for it. Let's change it at this time. He was always available to answer questions for this journalist, and I really appreciate that about him. He not only drove Safaricom at the top, he also stepped down to the level of ordinary Kenyans and became an equally effective driver's assistant. <laughs> Bob worked hard and pushed the company he led even harder, but he never lost the chance to unwind. Lou was 
nonsense because of Larry Maduro. Now, I'm going to challenge Giuliani, Peter Kenneth, and Jacob to do the ice bucket challenge. In our transformative journey, we leave no one behind. As I've said on many occasions, Safaricom is a purpose-driven organization. And so we stand for more than just numbers. We believe that when we place purpose at the center of our companies, profits will naturally flow. Close friends describe Bob as an elevator that always went down to bring others up. Moisha, a dancer who mentors thousands of needy girls, had such a personal, life-changing experience on the Churchill Show. Bob Colimo was told my story, and uh, they decided to surprise me during the New Year edition of Churchill Show. And uh, I remember that time after the, the show, I was at backstage. Then uh, the producer, Kitili, Dr. Leonard Kitili, he told me, like, don't change your uniform. You're going back to the stage. I'm like, I'm going alone. He's like, yeah, you're going. There's something huge is, go is about to happen this year. And then I was called at the stage with Churchill. Moesha come at the stage. Then when I went to the stage, I saw Churchill and Bob Collimore sitting together. And they, they, Churchill told me, just say the challenge you've been having with the girls. Then I told them the biggest part is education. Then Bob Colimo told me this. I remember these words very well. I can't forget these words because it was a life changer for me and the girls. So, you know, Safaricom has celebrated uh, its 18th birthday this year. And so what I want to do is I want to take 18 of your girls and I want to give them a full scholarship for the next five years. Umesikia vile amesema? Ni kuambia na Kiswahili. Amesema Safaricom is celebrating uh, 18 years kutoka ianze. So in that spirit, atasomesha 18 girls full scholarship for the next 5 years. Bob for me he's a hero. He's a hero not to me just to all the girls that are mentor, almost 3,000, and we don't call him Bob, we call him Hero. Because I can say I've been trying this for 10 years just to get people to come and support these girls to go to school. And finally Bob came and he made the dream come into reality for these girls. And every day it's, they just pray for him every single day. For us, he is a hero. He's a big inspiration to me, and he's a big hero for me and the girls, yeah. Bob was a very caring man, and I think the three words that I would use for Bob that he had in abundance were wisdom, courage, and kindness. And, you know, I saw that with Bob on a number of occasions. He was very supportive of work that we did, such as Kenyans for Kenyans. He was right there at the front. Um, championing, you know, why other corporates should get involved in galvanizing the corporate sector. So as a friend, I think I knew that I could always call on Bob um, and he, he would be there. So I think as a friend to many, and, you know, I was one of his very many friends, but he was always available and he always made time. Bob would call you back, he would text you, but it doesn't matter where he was, he would be in hospital and he would still get back to you. And so I think that's very special that Bob always found time. And I think maybe that's one of the things that we can learn about friendship is, is just creating time. Yeah, so I, I really want to talk about Kenyans for Kenya because some people don't understand just how important he was to that drive and to literally saving the lives of, of uh, many people in the Horn of Africa who were dying. You know, we, we went to the ground in, in Turkana and it was shocking. People were one, two days away from death. We all went with him and Red Cross and he was a big part of marshalling the media and saying, listen, Guys, let's all go up there and see what these guys are talking about. Red Cross say there's a, there's a, you know, there's a crisis. Government was saying there's no crisis, you know. Um, so we went and we saw. And it was horrifying. And we rallied and people hurt. And this CEO who had just come into Kenya recently 
all of a sudden became a pivotal leader in bringing number one private sector together and drawing them in to help, um, helping empower Kenya Red Cross Society, bringing the media. It was a really important role that Safaricom played and Bob himself led that, that drive. But his focus was on the people, was on how the company will operate, how you know, he's going to grow individuals in the company so that it actually works well and it's part of the community, it's part of the country and, and part of the, really the continent. And so that was quite uh, some task for him. And so I really met him when I was at Google because he wanted to understand the culture of Google. How can he make Safaricom behave the same way Google behaves? In fact, he was calling it uh, Safaricom 2.0. We had many sort of partnerships that we had put in place. And I remember he took his whole senior management uh, to Zurich with us so that he could actually see what are these operations, how does Google operate. A caring man and a sensitive soul. But what else did Bob draw from deep within to achieve the success that he did and lead a multi-billion shilling company? I think he put a human face um, to Safaricom. I think a lot of the one thing that you, that you could say about his tenure uh, that he accelerated was a human face that he put to it, first within Safaricom and then eventually within the wider community. I mean, he had, Bob had uh, tremendous uh, empathy for people and uh, wanted to get into your space and understand where you're coming from. And that is why the workspace, for instance, at Safaricom uh, reflected that and his engagements with, uh, business, with, with stakeholders, various stakeholders for Safaricom also reflected that. Um, but I think for me, uh, personally, he was a great friend. I knew him from my days at Vision 2030. He was kind enough uh, to agree to be part of a delegation uh, that accompanied myself and the former Prime Minister when he was Prime Minister to New York City to talk to investors about Vision 2030. And you can imagine uh, just how important that was for this country and for Vision 2030 to have a person of the caliber and stature of Bob Collimore himself, uh, you know, offering to come over to New York City and talk about Vision 2030 and talk to investors about Kenya and the country uh, and what the country has to offer. You could have a no better and more credible ambassador for this country than Bob. And so I will miss him because he put himself out there when he was needed. Uh, without asking too many questions. He was a great leader who, who was fundamentally a very deep and serious thinker, but didn't take himself too seriously. He did it with humility. He, he was very transparent, very open. I mean, he declared his, uh, his wealth. You know, he, he came out to do the things that the country was looking to do so that people could actually grow. He would make a difference. You look at, uh, we work together closely on the M-Pesa Foundation, um, the academy that they built. And you look at the input that he put to make sure that that is actually successful. You look at the marathons and all the things that, you know, both uh, Safaricom Foundation and M-Pesa Foundation actually do. He's, he was transformational. He did things and, and touched many people, even in terms of children, I mean, just a great man, great man. We are, it really is a big loss for us. I think Bob, you know, was a mentor to other CEOs. And I think that's one thing that I saw is that, you know, quite often the CEOs are all sort of the same. They don't really learn from each other. But Bob definitely taught other CEOs um, when it comes to being available, being kind, being very thoughtful, and always being there for the underdog. You know, I mean, you could be with Bob in an event, you know, with CEOs, with government officials, but he would always find that one person that really was trying to get his attention, who probably didn't have a title or anything, but Bob would be that person that reaches out to them. And so I think, you know, other CEOs have emulated that, and, and you're seeing that change in where it's not all about figures and results and, and, and you know, what, what your bottom line is, but also that kindness and that thoughtfulness and creating that within your own organization. And we've seen that within Safaricom. There's, they're always caring, they're always doing something. And, you know, while while it started when Michael was there with the, with the Safaricom Foundation and everything, I think Bob's character and his personality has definitely lifted it to what we see and what we experience. And I think Bob will go down, you know, in history as being the person that made Safaricom a very kind company. And that really will come from his humility and the person that he was. He took over from a very successful uh, business leader and took the company to greater heights of success. Uh, and did it for nine years and consecutively without ever looking backwards. So I think that 
his tenure at Safaricom, you know, me as an observer uh, and from the outside, and eventually, as you say, as a competitor, uh, one has to say that his was an impressive run. He took the telecom, not just Safaricom, but the entire telecom industry uh, in this country uh, to greater heights and help cement it. I think Michael had put it on the map and uh, Bob cemented uh, the Kenyan telco industry on their global map. And so I think he'll be sorely missed by the industry. Um, I think all my colleagues would agree with this. His leadership style was something you don't see often among business leaders in, in Kenya, in Africa because he's the kind of person who would be at home in the boardroom, but also at home at the jazz festival. He'd be the kind of person who would be at home um, at a press conference or in the air flying his chopper. And he brought all these aspects of his personalities, his love for the creative arts, his support of the sports um, in Kenya, and all of those reflected in the way Safaricom interacted with the people. For somebody who wasn't from here, but built this really patriotic brand that talked about the key elements of patriotism for Kenya in, in the advertising and that's shown right from the top. He never felt as an outsider that he was talking down on his customers. I always felt that he understood what they went through and he wanted to represent that and he wanted the brand to stand for it. Bob in many ways was a symbol of strength, synonymous with the powerful and innovative Safaricom. He was not only a CEO who was brave enough to show off his lively human side, he was also courageous to display vulnerability when illness struck. In 2017, Safaricom announced that Bob was unwell and seeking treatment in London. Bob himself told Kenyans what he was going through as he battled acute myeloid leukemia. Now, as many of you are aware, I've been away from the office receiving medical treatment since October of last year. I've been very fortunate to have a great team of medical specialists attending to me since I came to London, and as you can see, I'm making pretty good progress. I just entered the final phase of treatment and expect to be back in Nairobi as soon as the doctors feel that my immune system is sufficiently robust to withstand the infection risks that are usually associated with airline travel. Now, it's very difficult to say exactly when that will be, but close monitoring by the medical team will continue here in London for a number of weeks to come. In the meantime, I thank you all for your messages of goodwill, prayers and visits, and I look forward to being back in action in Nairobi soon. Bob told the Daily Nation that death was inevitable, and he'd made the decision not to cling on the thought because it would eventually come. It did, early this morning, and the news still came as a big shock to the country. Uh, we have to accept reality, and you already know, all of you, that uh, our CEO, Bob Colomo, passed away this morning after a long fight with cancer. Uh, I'm told that the type of cancer he had is something called acute myeloid, myeloid leukemia. Um, I believe that is a cancer of the blood. Well, I knew Bob was very, very unwell. Um, and the last time that I saw him, you know, he looked he looked okay, he, he looked weak, but he looked strong inside. And I think that was the thing about Bob, it was the strength inside. You know, he might have been really weak physically, but the strength inside is what kept him going. Um, I was not prepared for what happened today. I don't think anybody was. And it's just a really, really sad, sad day. And I think we, you know, as Bob would have done, is that we must be there for his family and for the organization as they come to grips with what's happened. Bob the man is gone, but many believe that the man who was Bob will find a place in the leadership skills of those who've been left behind to serve Kenya. What I take from Bob the most is just his realness and his authenticity. And we can be authentic, live a good, great life, live our great life. And, um, and I'm happy for him that he had that. So as we, even as we mourn, even as we mourn that we've lost Bob, I think he lived a great life and he lived his best life and that for me is a wonderful thing. He's somebody who commanded the respect of not just his employees and uh, others in the telecom sector but in the wider community. He was a much sought after speaker internationally, he was on UN boards, he was somebody who had a profile globally just because of the work he did over the last decade with Safaricom and that is going to stay, that his legacy is not just in the products he built but in the kind of leadership 
talking about sustainability and care for the environment, making sure there's an equal representation of men and women in the workplace and shattering those glass ceilings, helping them achieve that. All of those are things that maybe don't get as much attention, but are just as an important part of his legacy as what he did um, launching products at Safaricom. Bob's legacy is, is a really big legacy and I think when you're a self-made person the way Bob is, to leave the kind of legacy that he has definitely left and we've seen it today, just the outpouring of grief and the sadness that's kind of, there's a cloud. Um, I think that is, that is incredible, that you know, you can start from very humble beginnings and still leave this amazing legacy and that's a real tribute to the person that he was and, the, and his character.